Hey y'all, Countryman here. I'm going to do a video. And uh, as I go along, I'll thank who done it for me. Boy, that camera's crooked. That's better. Uh, I'm going to thank a couple of people and uh, along the way. Uh, some from my present, one from my past. And I'm going to make something that uh, we would use in a SHTF situation or a significant life altering life altering event which I think it's kind of cooler to say and doesn't use the shit word so we're gonna go with the S significant life altering event if it hits the fan what we're gonna do is uh, go back to basics go back to living off the land go back to uh, hunting fishing trapping uh, yeah, tuna comes from the store. It's in a can. It also comes from the ocean, and you go fish for it. And a catfish fillet did not get filleted itself, and you have to learn how to do it. Before you have the catfish to fillet, you have to learn how to catch it. If you have other means around your house, uh, you don't need a fishing pole. And that's what I want to show you. To my knowledge... What I am going to show you is illegal in all 50 states. I am not responsible for what you do on your own. If you use what I am going to show you, you take responsibility for all of the laws in your states. And if you get caught using it or whatever, hey, I'm telling you how to survive. This is a survival situation. I'm not telling you to go out and break any laws. So don't do it because I told you to. I am going to tell you how to make a, a, something out of metal. And what you do with it after that, it's up to you. So saying that, you're going to get me on full screen for a while. You get to see how fat I really am. And uh, we started out with a piece of string. With that piece of string... It goes around my dehydrator all the way my, all the way around just perfectly it is the circumference of my dehydrator down to the bun so this will be approximately how what is that 13 and a half inches I do believe uh, that's plenty big enough for making what we're going to make. Uh, the ones that I made in the past were about 18 inches. So you find you something. The circumference is 18 inches. Make you a string. Let's go over here and uh, we're going to set it up to where I can see. That's my shelf. It's got a lot of junk on it. That's sauerkraut and beans on top shelf, uh, jars and a coping saw or a miter box saw there, and then a bird feeder. And the chair that's fit for a king. Do I have all my preps? Nope, I don't. I had to go borrow a pair of wire snips off my neighbor. A little later on, I'm going to tell you who sent me this chicken wire. Good man. Everybody knows him. What I'm going to do is take this string here. No measuring, no need for a tape measure, whatever. And I am going to go around this, keep going all the way to right there and I'm going to add one to it so right there is where we need to be I'm going to make a cut right there I don't know if 
whether that's too high or not, but what we done, what I done, you're watching. So I'm going to unroll this a little bit. Where did I do that at? I just lost my deal. As you can see, it takes a few feet of wire. It ain't feet. It's probably, I don't know. But we're going to wind up with a circle. And what I'm going to do is cut that right down through there. And when I get done cutting all this, I'll get back to you. And what you want to do when you get down here, if you can see these wires, it's an octagon. You want to cut to one side of that octagon. That way you're left with all these little wires sticking out. They will come into use a little bit later. But you want those wires. So let me get back to you once I get this cut and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay y'all. I got all my wires folded around and uh, I got it a pretty nice seam down through there. A few, few wires sticking out. But I have got a complete cylinder. Is it completely round? No, but it'll be all right. Uh, what I want to do now, I don't know if you can see your chicken wire, but about every 6, 12, 14 inches, you got a kind of a straight wire. And it there's a straight wire where I got each of my index fingers here. It kind of uh, separates the chicken wire into threes. What I'm going to do now is count the uh, wire, the octagons in between. So there's a half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and a half, which, which would be 14. So I'm going to come down here 7. There's 1 and a half, 2 and a half, 3 and a half, 4 and a half, 5 and a half, 6 and a half, 7 and a half, right along here. That's too long. We're going to go back up here and where that first third is, the first third half of the wire, this is one inch mesh, so we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 inches. I am going to get me some more wire. I'm going to cut me out another piece as long as my string was the circumference not the radius, I messed up on that earlier. No yelling at me. I know what I'm talking about, I just misspoke. Uh, and I'm going to cut me out another piece this long and this wide. So what it amounts to is once I get this cut, I'll have three funnels for my trap. Let me get this cut out and we'll go on to the next step. And uh, There'll be a lot of fish traps right here. I'm going to say about 10. But let me get this cut out. I want to do one section here. One section of wire down to the first uh, deal here. And then the circumference of it. And uh, I'll show you what to do next. Countryman out for now. Hey y'all, uh, I got a thunderstorm going on outside big time. That's the reason that last section of the video uh, turned off. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera back around to where I was working on it and kind of show you what I was doing. The funnel doesn't have to be perfect. There is a uh, method to the madness on that. Uh, but you make a funnel to where it's center of your cylinder and you uh, cut it out and fold it over to where it uh, will make a funnel inside there and you want it kind of center if it's off to one edge don't worry about it but uh, I've halfway kind of tied that together on the other end what we're going to do is the next 
and final step to it and uh, let's turn the camera around and get back to work and uh, I have it completely wired in the funnel but it's in place to the point that it ain't gonna go nowhere and uh, I'll show you what the other end is going to be like When you get your wire, your roll of chicken wire, it's going to be uh, kind of wired together with a piece of wire. And what I done was unthreaded it, and that way I could unroll my wire. And you wouldn't believe it's like piano wire how much I got out of this. I got a feeling that you can't see my head. I'm going to raise that up a little bit. That looks better. You won't believe how much wire I got out of there. I bet there's 15 foot of wire that they use just to hold that into a nice tight cylinder. And I am going to cut me off some pieces about two inches long. And what I want to do with them, I want to make me Oh, I don't know. Let's start out with 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, And I'm going to make those, I'm going to use those. They're just like, I got to thinking, if you had a box of paper clips, two inch long, undo your paper clip. Those would work just fine. A little heavier wire than what I got here. And there's another deal I want to do. And I'm going to make it about six inches. This is not rocket science, people. So, I don't have heavy wire, so I'm going to fold me up about six inches long, maybe eight, and then I'm going to fold it back over again. If you got a welding rod, that's what my brother used, or any stiff wire. That should be enough to give you an idea of what I'm going to do. And what I've got, I'm going to twist those together. And I am going to come up with a piece of heavier gauge wire. Better known as, uh, what do you call it? Twisted wire. And this has got a purpose too. It's only about 8 inches long. Plus I got all my little pieces. Now you can see that I've got the funnel in there. It needs to be wired in a little better. But the funnel goes right down the center. I hope you guys can see that. She goes right down the center there. I'm going to wire that in better. That's okay. But this end down here it gets collapsed nice and flat and we want to take it and flatten it out all except for about six or eight inches on this one end take your short pieces of wire stick it through there just you don't have to tie it just wrap it around two or three times and it's going to hold these together the only time that you may get something that will mess up your trap is you get a pretty good sized terrapin turtle in there or uh, maybe a big old catfish. You'd be surprised what damage a flathead catfish can do. 
Do as I say, not as I do. I'm going to put these in my mouth. Don't do it. I'm going to wire up these edges. And pretty much just close off all but about six inches of the trap. And all I'm doing is wrapping those wires around. I'm really, if you've got a pair of needle nose, you could, uh, you know, do it a little nicer and neater. Or even try to tie this wire in a knot. But what I'm doing is just wrapping it around and closing it off. I'm going to say if I got this down to a science I could make one in 20 minutes or less. But since it's been since the 1970s since I've done one of these and uh, I'm old and had to remember and call my brother and all this stuff. You can see my funnel is still loose in there but what I want to do is make sure it's center and get it wired down anybody can do that I just wanted to let you see how it's going to turn out but down here on this end where I've got this uh, opening right here is where Mr. Mustard Fish if he's coming in here and he slides up there and he goes in the center of that and he's in his cage just shaking around well if you got that wire which I would I would probably use bailing wire or a uh, a uh, welding rod I'm gonna wiggle this back through here a couple of times back and forth and just in and out of the holes to where this is the reason you need a good stiff piece of metal this is not working that good you just want that wired shut So you got Mr. Mustard Fish in your jar or in your cage. You come up here, all you do is take your trap out of the water, you reach in here, you pull out your wire, you open that up a little bit, get your bucket and everything in the right spot. and Mr. Mustard Fish will slide right out of it. These nets, I don't know how much uh, the wire costs, so I can't do a cost analysis on it for you. But in a SHTF situation, you can use a uh, screen out of a screen door. Uh, got an old cotton trailer around, get a cotton torch up, make you one out of that chicken wire, extra chicken wire laying, laying around your homestead easy done and I'm living in an apartment I can do these I am going to finish wiring this up here and make it all nice and pretty and uh, I'll tell you what if I had some of these laying around in a significant life altering situation and I bet I could sell these like hotcakes. It ain't really uh, the deal about you using these, but if you needed to, you've got the knowledge to use them. And uh, how about a barter tool? A net like this in a significant life altering situation could feed a family. And it's not really hard to make and 
Ironhead 41, God bless you, brother, for the wire. I hope this video uh, sparks interest for you. I hope it does you proud. I've already promised my brother I wouldn't mention his name because he's afraid he's going to get in trouble with the game warden for it. I'm old. I don't care. Uh, but I was talking to him. If you're going to catch scaly fish like crappie, brim, bluegill, uh, red, red, uh, red wing, red gill, uh, sun perch, and stuff like that, all you got to do is find you a bush that is hanging out over the water and stick this under the water, all six or eight inches. And uh, if you got a current in the water, you stick it with the funnel going downstream. Because fish always feed upstream. And if you, we had the bar pits back in Missouri and there was little to no current in them. And it didn't matter, so we just stuck them under the trees. And the traps we made were a little bigger around with this. Instead of four foot long, they were five foot long. But uh, I have picked up the traps out of the out of the water, and they were sitting there shaking, completely full of crappie. I'm talking slab crappie and bluegill. And trust me, this is a whole lot faster than a cane pole and a bucket of minners. Now, granted, a cane pole and a bucket of minners and a case of beer is a whole lot more fun. But these work too. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys this. God bless. Let me know how you feel. And uh, hope it works out. Don't worry about measurements. Get you some wire make you a tube, cut you a funnel, eyeball it, put it inside, flatten out the other end, put you a, a stick or a sticker. You could use a willow tree to close off this main section here. Anything to where you can get out the fish quickly. And uh, try it. Uh, I would love to have anybody that can make... I've seen a bu bunch of minnow traps. This is not a minnow trap. This is for fish. And uh, anybody want to do a VR to it? God bless you. Countryman out for now.